The Ukrainian administration was incensed by the Russian army's assault on the civilian settlement in Dnipro. Just the other day, Dnipro was targeted with two Alexander missiles by Russian forces, causing extensive damage to many buildings in the area. The complete destruction of the western wing of the Ukrainian Security Service building was among the devastation, and residential apartments were also affected. As a result, eight civilians were wounded in the assault, though no fatalities were reported. Following the attack, a fire erupted, ravaging at least 100 meters squared before Dnipro's firefighters could contain and quickly extinguish the flames. The fire resulted in three additional injuries, further straining the Ukrainian administration's patience with the ongoing Russian military aggression against civilians. In response to the missile strike on the city, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky was resolute, declaring the country's intent to take any measures necessary to retaliate against Russia's actions. President Zelensky stated, We will do everything to fully punish Russia for the attacks on our people. The Russians will answer for what they did. We will do anything for justice. In addition, all necessary services for our people are in place. We respond quickly and help people. We keep the situation under control. He also mentioned immediate consultations with key Ukrainian officials, including the head of the security service, the Ministry of Internal Affairs, the State Emergency Service, and the Dnipropetrovsk Regional Military Administration. This was followed by a continuation of the Ukrainian army's counterattack. On the southern front, operations were intense. The Russian defense lines in Rosvik and Temryuk faced an onslaught with a Russian MLRS, an electronic warfare system, and approximately 20 Russian soldiers being targeted in a counter-strike supported by the Ukrainian Air Force. Although the cities of Rauiska and Temryuk remain under Russian control, their defenses have been significantly weakened. Furthermore, the Ukrainian assault units are advancing on Melitopol and Berdy Ants following their successful capture of Tokmak. The Ukrainian forces are progressing both southeast of Tokmak and towards Molohansk, wreaking havoc on Russian positions with air support. In a surprise maneuver, the Ukrainian army deployed a substantial force, including special forces units, across the Dnipro River via Novokakovka, advancing without resistance. An ambush by Russian forces near the village of Bratsk was narrowly avoided with the timely intervention of the Ukrainian Air Force, resulting in 25 Russian fatalities. The Ukrainian assault troops have also effectively blocked Russian supply routes from Crimea. The Ukrainian military's control of the Orykiv Robertine and Takmakrut has enabled them to strike at its origin by targeting the Chanyar Bridge, a critical point for Russian supplies through Takmak connecting Ukraine and Crimea. This tactical move by Ukraine to obstruct Russian supplies to Crimea has limited access to and from the Kherson region. Russia's furious response to previous attacks, such as the one on the Kerch Bridge, has led to repeated aggressions against civilians, like the assault on the Chanyar Bridge. The impasse faced by Russian troops in both Crimea and the Ukrainian front line augments the effectiveness of the Ukrainian counterattack. Despite the severity of these strikes, the Russian army persists in attacking civilian areas within Ukraine. A recent example occurred yesterday night when Russian forces targeted Odessa, a port city in southern Ukraine, with missiles. The majority of the assault was thwarted by Ukrainian air defenses, though a port worker was killed and infrastructural damage was sustained. The strike was seen as an expression of Moscow's resolve to hinder potential Ukrainian grain exports via the Black Sea. Russian caliber missiles were launched from a submarine at an unusually low altitude in the Black Sea, complicating the task of detection, according to the Southern Command of the Ukrainian Army. Since annulling the agreement allowing Ukraine to transport grain across the Russian Navy-dominated Black Sea, Russia has carried out repeated attacks on Odessa's port facilities. In one overnight raid, one individual was killed and 22 others were injured. The death toll later increased to two, as the body of a woman was discovered beneath the rubble, according to officials in Odessa. Moscow's withdrawal from the Black Sea Grain Initiative, backed by Turkey and the United Nations, has critically impaired Ukraine's ability to send its grain to global markets. This jeopardizes the stability of worldwide food prices, a situation further exacerbated when Russian drones hit the Red Sea port on the Danube, an alternate route for Ukraine's exports. Warnings have been issued by the UK's military intelligence and UK ambassador to the United Nations, Barbara Woodward, that Russia might consider a naval blockade on Ukraine or interference with merchant ships in the Black Sea.
Additionally, Russia's FSB revealed it had discovered explosive traces on a vessel heading to Rostovondon, having previously docked at Reni, a port not under the purview of the Black Sea Grain Initiative. The Russian Black Sea Navy has also blockaded Ukraine's Black Sea ports since the beginning of the Ukrainian war. This blockade has led to a nearly complete loss of global grain supplies from these ports, triggering a brief food crisis across the globe. Efforts to mediate the situation led Turkey and the United Nations to negotiate and sign a grain corridor agreement with Russia and Ukraine. Per the agreement, Russia would allow and protect the passage of cargo ships from Ukraine. The agreement was promptly signed and enforced last summer, but recent attacks by Ukraine on Russian positions in Crimea have prompted Russia to declare its withdrawal as the renewal date looms. These events, along with critical attacks that threaten to plunge the world into a grain crisis, highlight the alarming stage of the Ukraine war. The absence of a clear understanding of how the violence impacts the world makes the situation more complex. Calls for responsibility are growing as Russia continues to resist pulling back despite significant daily losses in Ukraine. The urgency for a resolution grows and persuading Russian President Vladimir Putin to either end the conflict or restrict it to the borders of Ukraine and Russia is a priority that cannot be ignored. Incredibly critical moves continue to come from the Ukrainian forces in recent days. The Ukrainian forces, which actively use unmanned aerial vehicles at many points, have defeated the Russian army by conducting successive operations with these unmanned aerial vehicles after the operation against Russian soldiers located inside the territory of Ukraine. The Ukrainian forces, who discovered a major security flaw, launched an attack into Moscow, and there was a significant explosion in the region. The local population and the Russian authorities were almost shocked by this attack on the interior of Moscow. The fact that the war is now being completely felt in Russia has begun to affect Putin's intensity on Ukrainian territory. With the explosion, Russian citizens, arguing that life safety was not ensured even in the country's capital, rose up against Putin and demanded that the war should be ended urgently. It is not known what Russia will do with the explosion that took place anymore. Recently, Ukrainian forces have taken incredible steps against the Russian army. The fact that Moscow is among these steps has almost decently infuriated the Russian authorities and Russian citizens. Putin's unjustified invasion of Ukrainian territory has now turned into a completely two-sided war. The Ukrainian forces, which use unmanned aerial vehicles in almost every operation, have once again proved this power to the world. The Ukrainian army, which has become very strong with the assistance of many countries to the Ukrainian forces, has started to organize air operations inside the borders of Russia in order to prove its strength and end the war. Russian leader Vladimir Putin, who has been in pursuit of this secret weapon of the Ukrainian forces since the first moments of the war, has seen the power of this weapon again with the blows he has received. The Ukrainian forces, which have been conducting successive operations with unmanned aerial vehicles, are succeeding in almost all of these operations, having achieved such great success. The Ukrainian forces began to change the course of the war with unmanned aerial vehicles. The Russian army, which made rapid progress in the first moments of its invasion of Ukrainian territory, has begun to retreat from the areas it currently occupies. The Russian army, which could not respond to the superior combat capabilities of unmanned aerial vehicles in any way, could not neutralize these aircraft, even with air defense systems. The reason for this is that these unmanned aerial vehicles can travel at high altitudes and thus cannot be detected by the radar of any air defense system. With this situation, unmanned aerial vehicles, which are being used extensively both in the field of intelligence and during operations, are one of the fearful dreams of the Russian army and Putin. In the latest operation organized by Ukrainian forces against the Russian army, it was carried out with unmanned aerial vehicles. The operation against the Russian headquarters in the Bomets region, where the Russian army is heavily concentrated, caused the Russian soldiers deployed to the Bomets region to be almost completely unarmed. The destruction of the headquarters that provided the coordinates for the Russian army in the Bomet region dealt a major blow to the Russian army. Moreover, the explosion of the ammunition depot located in the headquarters also caused the Russian soldiers to be completely unarmed in certain areas. The ammunition depot located inside this headquarters was the depot where weapons and ammunition were supplied to the fronts located in the Bomet region. 
the successful operation organized by Ukrainian forces also took a heavy toll on Russian leader Vladimir Putin. As for the details of the operation organized in the Bamit region, Russian leader Vladimir Putin, who wants to defeat the superiority that Ukrainian forces have achieved in the war thanks to unmanned aerial vehicles, has made many moves related to this issue. However, the Russian army and Putin, who could not escape the overwhelming force of the Ukrainian forces, completely destroyed the headquarters located in the Bamit region, which is very important from a strategic point of view. As a result of the operation, this headquarters, which is the place where Russian soldiers in the Bamit region are coordinated, is not only a coordinated jewel. It is the headquarters where Russian soldiers supply their weapons and ammunition. The intelligence provided by Ukrainian agents in the Russian army activated Dun manned aerial vehicles, one of the fearful dreams of the Russian army. The agent who infiltrated the Russian army, who stated that the air defense systems located inside the headquarters had been moved to another region, contacted the Ukrainian headquarters and stated that an airstrike could be easily carried out in the region without any difficulties within the framework of this information. The Ukrainian forces, which took action without wasting time, prepared and ready Dun manned aerial vehicles for the upcoming operation. In this operation organized with four unmanned aerial vehicles, the Russian headquarters was completely destroyed. The airborne unmanned aerial vehicles began to travel within the coordinates they received from the agent located inside the Russian army and reached the area within a short time. Unmanned aerial vehicles, which organized their flights from high altitudes, began to reduce their altitude in order to be able to drop their bombs on the headquarters. The unmanned aerial vehicles, which managed to completely achieve dominance over the headquarters, dropped their bombs on the Russian headquarters and officially bombarded the headquarters. The Russian soldiers, who did not even understand what had happened to them, left their headquarters and began to flee without even looking behind them. Unmanned aerial vehicles dropping many bombs on the headquarters in a short time caused a large explosion inside the headquarters, and the headquarters was completely destroyed. The fact that one of the bombs dropped on the headquarters hit the ammunition depot also increased the intensity of the explosion, and the headquarters completely turned into a ball of flames. The fires caused by the effect of the explosion left nothing left of the headquarters. The destruction of this headquarters, which is the coordination center of the Bamit region, stopped the activities of Russian soldiers in the region completely, and the fronts which suffered from a lack of weapons and ammunition were completely outgunned by the explosion of the warehouse. Seeing the power of unmanned aerial vehicles again with this move of the Ukrainian forces, Russian leader Vladimir Putin decided to take a historic step on this issue. Putin, who thinks that he can prevent air strikes with this decision, decided to send the S-400 air defense systems located in Russia into the territory of Ukraine. Putin, who thought that he could respond to the attacks of Ukrainian forces with these air defense systems, never realized that he was creating a huge security gap. The S-400s taken from the country's borders and deployed to the territory of Ukraine led to a major blow to Russia. This event, which has had a great echo on the world agenda, has also become the most talking about event on social media platforms. Although it hasn't even been 24 hours since the incident, it has become the most talking about event worldwide. This incident, which was also captured on the cameras of Russian citizens, broke click through records on social media platforms. As for the details of the events that took place, Russian leader Vladimir Putin recently made a historic decision to resist air strikes inside the territory of Ukraine. The Russian leader, Vladimir Putin, who deployed the S-400 air defense systems located inside Russia to the territory of Ukraine in order to prevent attacks by Ukrainian unmanned aerial vehicles, was unaware that he had created a major security vulnerability within the borders of Russia. The deployed S-400s, on the other hand, achieved success at the very beginning on Ukrainian territory, shooting down unmanned aerial vehicles operated by Ukrainian forces. Putin, who thought that he would gain superiority within the territory of Ukraine with the decision he made, soon regretted this decision very much. The S 400s, which were deployed by Putin's order, were initially thought to be able to protect Russia's borders as well. Russian leader Putin, who thought he had achieved great success with this decision, had determined the position of the deployed S 400s at a completely wrong point. The increased intensity of the Russian army against the Ukrainian forces also prompted Volodymyr Zelensky to act. Zelensky and the Ukrainian forces, 
who have made many plans on how to overcome these defense systems, decided to first identify the location where these S-400 were deployed. However, aware that the Russian military could not provide intelligence with the air defense systems it had deployed, and that the position of the air defense systems could not be detected, Zelensky applied an incredible strategy at this point, preparing the ground for one of the biggest blows to be struck at Russia. The strategy that the Ukrainian forces were planning was as follows. It was an inevitable fact that the Russian Army's S-400 air defense systems would be transported here with an operation to be launched in the Crimea region, which is of great importance for the Russian Army. Acting with this idea, the Ukrainian forces began to organize air operations against the Russian headquarters located in the Crimea region and ensured the relocation of the S-400s deployed within the territory of Ukraine to this region. Thus, the Russian army, which had given all its attention and intensity to Crimea, caused great vulnerability on the territory of Ukraine. The Ukrainian forces, aware that with this vulnerability they could reach the borders of Russia through the territory of Ukraine, sent exactly five unmanned aerial vehicles to the Crimean region and began to bomb the Russian headquarters. Ukrainian unmanned aerial vehicles, which caused large explosions in Crimea in a short time, completely attracted the attention of the Russian army here. At this point, the rapid transfer of the S-400s to Crimea proved that the ingenious idea of the Ukrainian forces was successful. The Russian army, which was completely focused on the Crimean region, was not aware of the deficit it had made on Ukrainian territory. Ukraine's unmanned aerial vehicles, which took action with this announcement, would be able to advance as far as Moscow with the relocation of defense systems located inside Russia to the region. Unmanned aerial vehicles, which took action without wasting time, took off from the territory of Ukraine and began to make their way towards the borders of Russia at high altitude. This vulnerability that Putin had created paved the way for an attack that could be organized inside Russia. Ukrainian unmanned aerial vehicles, which continued to advance from a high altitude, managed to continue moving over the borders of Russia without being detected by any air defense system. Four unmanned aerial vehicles, which reached almost to the Russian capital Moscow, knew that the biggest blow to Russian leader Vladimir Putin would be struck by an attack on this region. The unmanned aerial vehicles, which managed to get quite close to the borders of Moscow, lowered their altitude in order to organize the attack and began preparing for shelling shots. With the deceleration of unmanned aerial vehicles, the Russian soldiers inside Moscow were surprised by what they saw. The Russian soldiers who soon brought the unmanned aerial vehicles under fire with anti-aircraft missiles managed to shoot down three of the four unmanned aerial vehicles. But one unmanned aerial vehicle among them managed to evade the anti-aircraft missiles sent with high maneuverability and drop their bombs inside Moscow. The drone bombs that fell into Moscow within seconds caused a huge explosion in the region. The unmanned aerial vehicle, which successfully dropped its bombs into Moscow, was neutralized by Russian soldiers within a short time. However, this counterattack was too late. The fact that Ukrainian forces have become able to launch attacks even inside Moscow has caused a shock to Russian leader Vladimir Putin. Putin, who made a big mistake by deploying S-400 air defense systems to the territory of Ukraine, must now determine what statement he will make to Russian citizens in response to this attack, a question that remains a big question mark around the world. The war, carried out in line with Putin's wrong strategies and initially expected to last only a week, began to be felt as far away as Moscow. The explosion in Moscow was captured on the cameras of Russian citizens, and the sharing of these videos on social media platforms created quite a stir around the world. After the events, Russian citizens began to feel that their personal safety was in complete jeopardy, reacting strongly by expressing that Putin could not even protect his borders. Putin's pre-war statements that the war would last only a week now ring hollow, as the conflict stretches into its 17th month. This prolonged situation greatly affects Russian citizens. The fact that Ukrainian forces have achieved such great success in their operations is proof that the course of the war has completely changed and is working in favor of Ukraine. However, the military losses inflicted by the Russian army have cost millions of dollars, further damaging Russia. With this financial loss, the situation in Russia, which was already in a significant economic crisis before the war, has become even more precarious. The people, feeling the brunt of this economic crisis, express that they are having a hard time meeting their daily needs and miss Russia's pre-war state a lot.
Russia's prosperity rate had been at a very high point. Russian citizens, who have been living in prosperity for many years, have recently fallen on hard times. Along with this problem, the reaction against Putin continues to grow. Russian citizens have begun protesting against Putin's wrong strategies and unjust occupation after the attacks on Russia's borders. Citizens, quite weary of the negative conditions and anxiety caused by the war, took to the streets to protest, demanding that Putin stop the war and resign. These demonstrations have created a great outcry, and it is clear that the value Putin places on his people with each of his moves is negligible. Russian citizens, frustrated with Putin's actions, declare that they will not vote for him in any future election. Surveys conducted by expert researchers indicate that Putin's trust game is completely over. The Russian army has been left t without ammunition. U.S. support to Ukraine has changed everything. Us made HIMARS missiles have destroyed the crucial railway where Russian munitions are shipped. The explosions carried out by the Ukrainian army on the railway bridge crossing the Malakna River have disrupted all of Putin's plans. On top of this, the attacks against the Russian headquarters in Donetsk, Zaporizhia, and Luhansk have become the nightmare of the occupying Russian forces. In the recent days of the Russia-Ukraine war, Ukraine began to carry out terror operations. The Ukrainian army, mostly on the defensive at the beginning of the war, made moves to change the nature and scale of its operations with incoming support. The recent support to the Ukrainian army, which has won critical victories in numerous ground operations with packages sent by the United States and Western countries, has extended Ukraine's success on land to air and sea. Many Russian ammunition shipments were stopped before they could reach the desired area. As a result of Ukrainian air operations, but not content with this, Ukrainian soldiers have now targeted critical routes where Russian ammunition shipments are made. Thanks to this, HIMARS missiles have become the most used weapons of the Ukrainian army, aiming to completely deplete the Russian army of ammunition. The HIMARS, included in the new support packages sent by the United States to Ukraine, have left the Russian army without an opportunity to make counter moves. At this very moment, the explosions that took place on the railway bridge located on the Malakna River, where the Russian army was sending ammunition trains, have the potential to completely change the course of the war. The Ukrainian army had been working to stop these Russian ammunition trains for a long time. However, the HIMARS missiles sent by the United States have greatly accelerated this process. Thanks to HIMARS missiles capable of multiple rocket launcher attacks, the Ukrainian army was able to carry out cross-border attacks on the Belgorod region within the borders of Russia, and it was decided to use these missiles for the operation against the railway passing through the Malakna River in the Melitopol region. The Ukrainian Special Forces Unit, consisting of 100 people next to the HIMARS missile systems, advanced towards the city of Melitopol after the Ukrainian soldiers who reached the region uploaded the coordinates of the bridge to the HIMARS missiles. They began to build positions on the terrain to wait for the Russian ammunition train. A group of Ukrainian soldiers placed a large number of remote-controlled CFAR explosives on the railway. Although these explosives could not directly damage the train, they would have been enough to stop the Russian ammunition train temporarily. Having completed their preparations, the Ukrainian soldiers moved to their positions and began to wait. A few hours later, the expected news came from the Ukrainian scout troops monitoring the Malakna River. Seeing the approach of the Russian ammunition train, the Ukrainian soldiers pressed the button when the train reached the expected point. As a result of the successive explosions, the tracks on the railway were torn apart. The Russian soldiers on the Russian ammunition train, which stopped abruptly, were taken aback by what had happened. At this time, the Ukrainian Special Forces Unit took action and attacked the front wagons of the train with portable rocket launchers. After these shots, the train was completely prevented from moving backward. The Ukrainian soldiers took the opportunity to blockade the train and realizing that they had nowhere to run. The Russian soldiers obeyed the call of the Ukrainian forces to surrender and left the train. After that, the Ukrainian Special Forces Unit proceeded to the safe zone, taking with them a large number of ammunition on the train and the captured Russian soldiers. But the real move of the Ukrainian army appeared later. The Ukrainian Special Forces commander gave the command to fire the HIMARS missiles while the Ukrainian Special Corvettes were moving away from the region. Seven HIMARS missiles installed around the Malakna River targeted the railway bridge where their coordinates were loaded beforehand. 
Very large explosions took place on the Russian ammunition train on the railway bridge, which was hit by successive missile firings. A wagon on the Russian ammunition train that had not touched the explosive before the Ukrainian soldiers evacuated the area was hit. The explosion caused by a missile hitting this wagon was heard from the surrounding areas. After the railway bridge was destroyed with a great noise, the Ukrainian army gained a very critical advantage. Russian soldiers on the territory of Ukraine who learned that they could not receive ammunition support for a long time fell into great panic. In addition, the Ukrainian operation in which millions of dollars worth of ammunition was lost was enthusiastically welcomed by the Ukrainian people, while the soldiers responsible for the operation were congratulated by the Ukrainian parliament. After the addition of a large number of Russian munitions to the Ukrainian army's inventory during this operation, the statement made by Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky caused a huge echo all over the world. After thanking U.S. officials for their support, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said that he owes his main thanks to Putin, who has provided ammunition and weapons to the Ukrainian army with every failure. The failure of Putin, whose status in world politics was greatly shaken after Zelensky's statements, became a subject of mockery. However, a move made by the Ukrainian army a few months ago when its operations were continuing unabated led to the surprise of the Russian army. What to do now? The explosions in Crimea, which has been under Russia's unjust annexation since 2014, have become Putin's nightmare. Since the beginning of the Russo-Ukrainian War, Russian leader Vladimir Putin has made the Crimean Peninsula the main ammunition depot of the Russian army. However, the simultaneous operation of the Ukrainian army with the insurgent organizations in Crimea in recent months was enough to disrupt all Putin's plans. The local people who were extremely disturbed by Russian persecution in Crimea organized in many regions and formed resistance groups. The activities of one of these organizations, the Crimean Fire Group, have carried out numerous acts of sabotage against Russian forces in the region. On top of this, the Ukrainian army contacted the Crimean Fire Group and executed a mind-boggling operation. Russia's only land connection to Crimea, the Kerch Bridge, was the route Putin used for ammunition convoys. The Crimean Fire Group, sent to the vicinity of this bridge which was targeted by the Ukrainian army, placed remote-controlled explosives at both mouths of the bridge. After that, the Crimean Fire Group, which was waiting for the approach of the Russian ammunition convoy, took action when the Russian armored vehicles were seen, and when the Russian armored vehicle, which was located at the very front of the ammunition convoy, came upon the explosives, the insurgents launched the operation. The Russian soldiers in the vehicle, shaken by a loud noise, immediately got out of their vehicles and started taking cover. But at this time, the Ukrainian army carred up with the help of the Crimean fire group and with accurate shots of HIMARS missiles placed in the region, the Kerch Bridge was razed to the ground. The Russian soldiers, who quickly fled back from the bridge, which became unusable, had to retreat towards the territory of Russia. With this attack, one of Russia's most critical ammunition routes was destroyed. Only a few months later, the Ukrainian operation on the railway bridge in Malachna proved that the Russian army would have ammunition problems for a long time. Volodymyr Zelensky's public statement after the explosion of the Kerch Bridge was on the agenda of the world press. Zelensky stated in clear language that no matter how the war progresses, it will continue until the Crimean people win their independence. Zelensky stated that the Ukrainian army will continue its air operations unless Russian leader Vladimir Putin stops the unjust annexation of Crimea. Zelensky stated that Crimea has never belonged to Russia and will never be. After these statements, Putin, fearing the end of his dominance in Crimea, ordered the installation of a large number of air defense systems in the region. The statements made by war analysts on this issue have caused a huge echo all over the world. According to war analysts, the Ukrainian army has shown great development thanks to the support received in the last days of the war. Now, the increasing support that allows the Ukrainian army to conduct very large-scale air operations has left the Russian army facing very big problems in many regions. The biggest reason for these supports was the very successful steps taken by Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky in foreign policy. Thanks to this, Many world states, especially the United States and other Western countries, have mobilized for the independence of Ukraine. And with the HIMARS missiles sent by the United States, which have recently changed the content of support packages for Ukraine, the Ukrainian army has now begun to be able to conduct cross-border operations.
The operation in the city of Belgorod was one of the biggest examples of this. After this attack, Putin, who has now begun to feel the war on his own borders, is deploying air defense systems to many regions of Russia, especially Moscow, out of concern. But these developments are scaring the Russian people. Katerov's main headquarters have been razed to the ground. The strength of the Russian army in Bakhmut has reached the point of exhaustion, and the Ukrainian army has completely turned the balance in the war in its favor with this operation. After the attack on the Chechen main headquarters, many Chechen soldiers crossed over to the Ukrainian side. After the mind-blowing operation of the Ukrainian army, Putin is literally cornered in the last days of the Rush-Ukraine war. The eyes of both sides were on Bakhmut. Thousands of Russian soldiers have been sent so far for the occupation of Bakhmut, which is known for its wealth in terms of natural resources. However, the Russian army, which could not overcome the successful resistance of the Ukrainian defense line that reached a length of kilometers, could not fully establish its dominance in the region. During this process, the Chechen army, led by Katerov, was sent to Bakhmut as a reinforcement unit to the Russian army. At this point, it was seen once again that the war was not only important for Ukrainian independence. Two groups have recently formed in Chechnya. One of these groups was the Chechen army, led by Ramzan Kadyrov, known for his pro-Putin policies. Other Chechen groups rebelled, not wanting to be under the rule of Kadyrov, who fulfilled everything Putin wanted. And these rebel Chechen soldiers formed an army that they called the Sheikh Mansur Battalion. The Sheikh Mansur Battalion, fighting to free the Chechen people from Kadyrov's repressive regime, joined the war on the Ukrainian side. Kadyrov's army, which was sent to the Bakhmut region in recent days, suffered a huge blow in the face of the simultaneous operation of this Sheikh Mansur Battalion and the Azov Battalion, one of the favorite units of the Ukrainian army. A few months before this ingenious operation, the Ukrainian army took another very successful step and achieved critical victories in the Donetsk and Luhansk regions. Putin had sent the Wagner mercenary group and the Chechen army, led by Kadyrov, to these two regions. However, due to the irregular movements of these two troops, as well as the inability to get the ammunition and ration support they wanted, there were huge security gaps. Seizing this opportunity, the Ukrainian army ensured that the Russian army suffered huge casualties as a result of back-to-back -back operations in the two regions. After these attacks, some of the Chechen soldiers, led by Kadyrov, under the influence of the racist treatment and sanctions they suffered, made such a move that Putin and Kadyrov were surprised at what they endured. Russian President Vladimir Putin has sent mercenary armies to the regions where conflicts have been intensifying since the beginning of the war. However, the mutinies of mercenaries who were uncomfortable with being sent to the front lines with their lives ignored greatly increased the tension in the Russian army. The moves made by rebel soldiers on the battlefield, who began not to listen to their headquarters commanders, jeopardized the operations of the Russian army on Ukrainian territory, so much so that many plans of the Russian army ended before they could be realized due to the influence of rebel soldiers, according to local sources. The Russian army has lost thousands of soldiers in the Bakhmut region alone. After that, the airstrikes carried out by the Ukrainian army in the Donetsk, Luhansk, and Kherson regions changed everything. The fact that no air defense system was provided in these regions, where there were mostly Chechen mercenaries, enabled the Ukrainian army to carry out very critical air operations. That's exactly why the Ukrainian army made such a move that Kadyrov was looking for a hole to escape. Kadyrov has lost a large number of his soldiers in the recent Ukrainian offensive, as well as dozens of tons of ammunition at the headquarters on Tuesday. Having lost hundreds of soldiers in just one month, Kadyrov ordered the withdrawal of his troops from Donetsk and Luhansk to Zaporizhia. After the Ukrainian intelligence service received this information, the Ukrainian army took action, and it carried out a very large operation on Kadyrov's largest military headquarters located near the Zaporizhia region. The bombardment of Ukrainian unmanned aerial vehicles, which took off one after the other, destroyed Kadyrov's fortress in a very short time. Chechen mercenaries who were caught in this attack at night could not respond in any way after the Ukrainian air operation in which 205 Chechen mercenaries lost their lives.